Hey guys, happy Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, July 9th. I can't believe it, already July 9th. Super, I know you guys don't believe that I'm here working past four o'clock in the afternoon, but I'm with my friend Nathan Co. Marsh. Super excited to have him on the show. Uh, let us know you can hear us and see us because you know you're gonna see some magic. I mean, he's magical anyway. Hi, Lori. Give us a thumbs up and a heart or something. What's up, Justin? How you doing, buddy? Oh, Yvonne Sandoval's on. See, we've got people watching, so we've got people coming on, Gina <laughs> Lee. Um, welcome to the show. I'm excited to have you on the show, not yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're excited to have you as well, guys. We're, very we're excited, excited to have you, to have you too. Well. Um, Nathan yeah. is super talented. He, I can I use the word magician? He's yes, a yes, magician, illusionist, whatever words we're going to use today. Wendy Stewart from Brazil. What's happening? Um, but when we were talking about the idea that, you, and you have a show going on, and we're gonna talk about that. Sure. I'm like, yes, I want you to come on the show because <laughs> last time we didn't do anything magical. I mean, you're, right. ma That's you're right. magical. <laughs> Love you too, Wendy. You're magical, but we didn't do anything. So, welcome back. It's great to be back. Um, looking forward to it, and I can I can testify for you guys that Ted was indeed working after 4 p.m. It was. So, yeah, yeah. It's really scary, and that's not an illusion. I promise you. All right, so um, obviously we always, even though we're, we're promoting a show and we want to talk about sure. that, people still like to be reminded of who you are, why you have three names, <laughs> um, what you do, and so give them a little background on Yeah, you. absolutely. So um, Nathan Comarsh and the three names were because I started a business in 2004 and went on Google and realized that uh, there was a president of Harvard that had the name Nathan Marsh. And I realized that there's no way I was going to beat that. That wasn't CEO. happening. It was not happening. So, but the three names, I realized that if you search Nathan Comarsh, it will always come up uh, with me. And uh, it's a little, little less likely that some horrible criminal uh, <laughs> does something awful. I don't know uh, any Nathan Comarsh hey, hey, criminals. Right, 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 That's right. good. Yeah, absolutely. So, how did you get into um, performing sure. magic illusions? Yeah. Because that's not, normally it's not something you wake up and go, okay, I'm a magician. You might right. pretend as a kid, right. but you've taken this, this is your career, this is your passion, this yeah, is what you do. Yeah, it's been a full-time business since 2004, uh, appeared in 13 countries on national television with Penn Teller, um, uh, the Magic Castle, which is an incredible experience. Um, but yeah, so I was, I was 11 years old and a friend of my parents uh, borrowed a dollar bill at the table and made it float in midair, just like let go of it, and that thing was was levitating right in front of my eyes, and I freaked out, as an <laughs> and I, I had to know, and so I uh, went into libraries and pursued it as kind of like a, a passion and a hobby, and um, through college started performing a little bit, and there was a summer camp in the Pocono Mountains in Pennsylvania that I got a summer gig during college, just chilling out and teaching magic to the kids as like a magic class, and over the course of that summer, they asked me to do a show, and it was the first time I put together like a formal show. And half of the audience were these kids who'd been, you know, they're 12, 13, they've been living with you, they look up to you, you're the cool, you know, college student. And so from that very first show, there was this natural connection of, of the, that. I remember that first night and that feeling that you get in live performance when things just click. Everything comes together and there's this endorphin rush as you, as you walk out of the theater. Um, which in this case was a little little building on the side of a hill into the mountains and woods. I love that though. I think but, that people miss, that's a connection. Like people always give me a hard time, jokingly I think, sure. about doing a live show. But I love the interaction. This is as close to an audience yeah. as I'm gonna get. And I think that it just feeds on what you're doing and it's so positive and wonderful. And it's, especially if you know what you're doing. I don't, well, yeah, but Nathan does. Well, I don't know about that, but there's, there's something, you know, like I remember um, there's something that Alan Watts was saying about, um, he was talking about the difference between like a, like a debutante and a flower that was just blooming. And he talked about the, the beauty that was very intentional and that was effort filled and there was somebody trying to be beautiful and putting every little thing into place and the beauty that came from just being itself, I the flower just bloom, blooming and being itself. And there's something about being live in the moment, right here, right now, that um, you can't replace when you start trying to put something together in advance. And, well, it's feeding you, right? So yeah. it feeds your soul. Living your passion is the title sure. of the show that you came up with. So you you have this passion, you have this talent, this gift. We all have them. 
We don't always use them, but you figured out what yours was, which is a gift in and of itself. And you're living it. You have figured out love, magic, and every aspect of joy forced upon people. If there's anything you are going to force upon people, it should be. I can't read it, Justin, but I'm sure it's joy. Yeah, (laughs) there's a little Seymour button. No, but I I think I think that that's so cool. So you got it early on. You figured it out. And by early on, college is still early on, people. You guys put so much pressure on yourselves to know what you want to do at age seven. You got to relax. Um, how did you take it to the next level? Well, so started, college is yeah. this, but then you go, all right, I want yeah. this to be my career. Well, I took what both me and my parents thought was going to be a year off between undergrad and graduate or professional school and started performing at a small um, dinner theater in Sarasota, Florida, the Golden Apple Dinner Theater, which is such a cool, funky place that it. no longer exists, unfortunately. Um, but it... It took off and, and the business grew to the point where it was clear that A, it was what I was meant to do and B, that it was sustaining itself and, and I was able to keep going. And, and one of the keys to that is I've always seen the career as, as having two parallel prongs, which is there's mastering the craft, whatever it is that you do. It's getting as good as you can, getting that product as tight and as solid and as polished as you can. Uh, hey, Justina and Chris, Just what are you guys Justina. looking at? That's an excellent question. <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't sure what Chris meant about yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, yeah. we're looking at the camera, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. The yeah. video camera. <laughs> My iPhone 8 Plus is what we're looking at. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so there are always those two prongs, right? And one is one is building the market and building the brand and building yes. the value. And the other is what pilots refer to as flight time. It's, it's getting out and doing it as much as you can in as many different situations as you can so that things just don't throw you anymore. Um, and so that the, the thing itself is so good that, you know, Steve Martin's thing, be, be so good they can't ignore you. And... Um, so it's always been, yeah, pursuing How do you hone that paths. craft? Because it's, it's one thing if you become like a CPA or a teacher or a lawyer, right? So you kind of know, but honing a craft like magic. Sure. Um, how do you learn other people's tricks? How do you, sure. do you create your own tricks? Uh, the, the closest thing I compare to- Is tricks an okay point? word to yeah, say? Yeah, tricks is fine, yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah, tricks is fine. Um, there's a, uh, the closest thing I can compare it to is jazz. That there's, you spend time studying kind of the structures of what makes great classic magic, right? Or great classic comedy. You know, what's the structure of a bit? What's the thing that, that makes things work? And then you find, how am I gonna do this? And how do I fit what I am creating or, or what interests me or what I care about? How do I fit that within that? And when it comes to like the classic tunes, as it were, and they're kind of, plots and magic, right? That are, that are, you know, this happens or this happens. And some people have done it over hundreds of years and done it very differently. How do you take that and then adapt the structure of it or figure out, you know, deconstruct what is it that makes this interesting? Sure. What is it that makes it something that's lasted so long? And how can I find a way to bring that to a new audience in a different way? Um, so that's that's a big piece of it. So yeah. And then do but, you do you fine tune it? Do you? Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. You fine tune it by by videoing yourself as much as possible, recording yourself as much as possible, doing it in as many different uh, environments as you can, and um, making it work uh, making it work that way. But so. then you know you have there are people who have a passion for whatever they have, but then they don't know sure. how to make it into a career. They don't they don't right. know how to take it and go. All right, so I'm going to make this. So this is what pays the bills, yep. and how did you make that transition? So something interesting, and here's, here's so there are two answers to this, right? And one is, I have no clue, because one is that- That, <laughs> that there, is so fair and there, honest. <laughs> there, are so, there are so many careers, and there's a, there's a guy, a wonderful magician, Mike Caveney, who talks about this, where he says, you know, if you wanna be a, a neuroscientist, I, I can tell you what to do to get there. Like, I can tell you these are the hoops you have to jump through, and they may be very difficult, but there's a, there's a clear path there. Uh, if you want to be a professional magician, I have, there's no one clear path. Everybody finds their own. But the answer, I think, is, and I think this is true of, of a great deal of whatever it is that you're passionate about that you want to find a way to monetize, is really connecting and understanding with why you want to do it. And that if you, it's that old, you know, it's kind of a cliche, like, but it's that old thing of if, if the why is important enough to you, the, the 
everything else, the how and the what, that, 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 that works itself out. There's a friend of mine who, who um, was just saying, and I don't know if he got this from somebody else, it sounded like he's somebody who doesn't usually say very wise <laughs> things, and suddenly there's this really wise so thing. So he picked it somewhere. I don't know, I don't know, maybe, maybe not, maybe not. Um, but he, uh, he said, you know, there's, there's always the thing about people saying, um, something never comes from nothing. But he said the converse is also true. Nothing never comes from something. That if you do the work and you put whatever that effort is, and the return may is not gonna be equal to the work you put in, right? We all know that as entrepreneurs. You do so much, you do this much work and you get this much return at a certain point, right? It's like rolling a rock up a hill and then maybe it falls down as you get momentum and it picks up. But um, if you do the effort and you do the work and you care enough about it, you'll and it's important enough to you, you'll, you'll find a way to, to, to make that happen. I love that because I think like, this is manifest destiny. This is this is you creating your law of attraction. There's all sorts of words for it, but you're creating this, right? So you're working on it. You're honing it. You're creating that, and you're making it happen. I think a lot of people don't take that next step. Sure. They have a passion. They have something they're good at. They have a gift, a talent, and they go, "Well, I'm really good at that, but I'm going to hold it back here. Yeah, I'm going to do yeah. my dull, yeah. boring, awful job I hate." Yeah. Uh, for the next 30 years and yet if they just took the step like a couple of yeah. steps it's not that many steps to get to the next level and that it's not necessarily that much more risky it's you really know Jim, not. Jim Carrey talked about the fact that he realized you know his dad wanted to be a comic and at one point there he goes home and the furniture is all on the lawn and they've been foreclosed on because his dad had been fired from the job that that he took because it was a secure and safe option and he was like, you can fail at something you hate. There's no more risk in failing, you know, with something you love as well. So, right. so that's kind of, that's, I know. mean, J Justin, you're all over the place. I like it. He's asking yeah. what's your next step. So I want to know. So, yeah. so you get to, so I want to get to how he gets here. Right. So you decide, you hone your craft, which is a, a, ta a process. This is a sure. constant ongoing process. And I call it a craft because it is. All of us that are doing things, we're working on our craft. Yep. Um, you know, doing this show is I've my first episode to now a thousand times different. So your first magic show to your one that you're doing at Del Frisco's completely different. Sure. Does it mean it's better or worse? No, it just means it's different. It's evolved. Absolutely. And I think a lot of people get stuck in that. They don't know how to evolve. They don't. They and maybe that's a great. That is a great question, Justin. What do you do next step? What do you do to get there? Yeah, so the next step, so, so as Tom Mom and Dad, to, do they go, what in God's <laughs> name are you, I mean, if my kids right. came to me, I'd be we like, what is magician. happening? Yeah, there have been some interesting conversations, which have changed over the years, but with, with the families of women that I've dated, uh, <laughs> yeah. as things have, that as things have be, been more That must be an interesting discussion. That's, um, that's become a lot easier, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so, so what is the next step? So are we talking in terms of what is the next step for me now? Or what is the next step when you're, okay, this is what I want to do and I need to make it into a reality. How do I... I would like to, I mean, me personally, would I would like to, to go. I want to know what the next, because I think you've, you've told them, you've honed your craft, you're sure. good. So now, and then you've gotten past the parental stuff, the girlfriend stuff, right, and you're right, working right, on yeah. that. Now, how do you go out and find somebody to pay you yep. for your passion? We yeah. don't talk about pay enough. Right. We need right, to right, talk right. about pay a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Numbers are numbers are an important part of life. Um, yeah, numbers are a very important part of life. Uh, yeah. So in terms of it's it's taking that switch, right? Because we're talking about why you want to do this, right? It's right. focused on yourself. It's doing that switch to focus on to try and see what you're doing through the eyes of somebody else, right? So it's who is it that can get value from this? What is the problem that they're trying to solve? And how is it that, that I solve that problem? How is it that I serve other people with the thing that I do well? I love that. So in my case, it's, you know, it, and it's a variety. I, I, most of my work is in the, is in the corporate event world. So it's, it's ranging from someone has, on one situation, we had uh, 800 German IT executives at eight in the morning and they had a long how do you speech. win that audience oh my god i it's hope the they perfect, had some the good german beer for, the perfect setup for, <laughs> for comedy right the ideal setup um but it's uh you know it's it's 
figuring out, it's being very clear about what that problem is, right? Like, okay, people have been out the night before, they're from very different time zones, um, and we've got this long, very technical program for them. How do we grab their energy and their focus and get them, get them in a headspace where they can really absorb this content and be excited about it? In other situations, you know, really, really clear examples, and it's not what I'm passionate about, but, but I have done work at trade show exhibits where we're stopping a crowd in front of an exhibitor's booth, um, doing this entertaining experience with something different that they're not just walking by, and, and slowly integrating the exhibitor's message into the performance. I love so, that. So it gets knocked down. So they're, they're very simple, they're very clear-cut problems like that. And then there's just how do we take this dinner that we're having and make it a really fun, interactive, engaging experience um, that's, that's worth, because if you look at it in an event, um, there's, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars potentially in terms of gathering all these people in one place and feeding them and hotels and transfers and everything else and so once you have them there their experience is the most important thing right Correct. that's where the event happens is why we go to the these brain. things and so it's seeing it from the perspective of not you know, not the the diva thing of I have this show and you know it's it's this is an opportunity for me. It's no, right. this is a way to take somebody's event to another level. Um, but you're you're um, I can hear from what you're saying. You're emotionally investing in making sure that the audience is taken care of, uh, and you're investing in what your perception is of what the audience wants and where they're at. What yes. what circumstances have brought them there? I have yes. been to many corporate events where there is someone who performs, not necessarily a magician, sure. could be a musician, and you can almost tell immediately if they have not read their audience. Right. Because, right, right. wow, if you misread your audience, especially 8 a.m. or 7 a.m. Yeah, with a whole bunch yeah, of German yeah, yeah. IT yeah. people, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you have to know what you're in for, and if you don't care enough, it shows immediately. But And this goes to the beauty of what you were talking about about live is that it's not just one person up there. It's, the, it's about the relationship between true. The, the performer and the audience, and it's about the connections that, that happen in that way. Um, so when you meet, so when you, so you get, you become, obviously, this becomes your, you're living your passion. Sure. You are working in the industry. Sure. And uh, you find your niche so that you can continue to get corporate gigs. Mm -hmm. Um, is gigs even the right yeah, word? Yeah. I'm probably gigs. dating well, do you myself. Know where, do you know where gigs comes from? There's a funny thing. Did yeah. you tell me this once? I might have. Tell me I what it is. Been. What's I gig? So it was during the Depression that jazz musicians, um, uh, it was an expression of gratitude that was for them, God is great. And it was... You did tell yeah, me yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, love that. Great. And I always know that gig has another meaning and then I've forgotten where it comes right, from. Right, I won't right. do it this time. <laughs> uh, but so you, you take it and then you're in it and I think that a lot of people um, wouldn't know sometimes how to respond to you that's one thing I want to talk about sure so the audience so if I have if I'm at a corporate um, event gig uh, or I'm at Del Frisco's right, right, uh, right. and I uh, I imagine you have a lot of people that do this oh my god don't come over to me um, maybe not at this particular show, but I think that a lot when you're walking the audience, you're working the audience. So that's, people don't know how to respond yeah, so to you. They don't know how to react up, to you. You're bringing up so yeah, you're bringing up. Um, that's really interesting because there's a very interesting style of performance, and a lot of magicians have done that. Where um, and I understand the appeal to event planners, and I did it. That was the beginning of my career. Was was what we call kind of walk around performances, where people are in a cocktail environment and they're being visited kind of group by group by the performer. I um, I hate that, and I, I don't do that. I, I, I don't. Don't you think most people do? Like, I feel like when I see somebody yeah. coming up, you could be bringing me a rose, unless right, you're bringing me alcohol. Right, right. Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. sure I want you around. And it's not that I don't have a good time once they're there. That's yeah. the part that yeah. I always kick myself about. Because if I have somebody come up to the table, right. and I've rolled my eyes four times, I'm like, I'm in the middle of a conversation, but I know you need to do this particular thing. And then once I let them do it, I'm always happy and I laugh and it's yeah. a good time. I don't know why we have to be so put put off by that. 
Yeah, it's there's something to be said for being open to the experience, right? Being open to like something's coming up. How do I how do I have the most fun in the situation, right? And that's one of the inherent challenges of corporate entertainment, whether it's a show or anything else, is that or or whether it's a formal show, which is the main bread and butter of what I do is right. after dinner show or hosting um, and providing MC work versus what you're talking about, the interactive kind of at the cocktail party kind of thing. Um, one of the key things, one of the key differences between that and a lot of other entertainment environments, right, is people are there because they have to be there. Right. And so there is a, there's, there's a structure that I have for, for shows overall, but also for individual performance pieces which is kind of like a template. It's, it's the sprinter's block that, that the runner pushes off against, right? So you're not just faced with a blank page when you're creating. And that template in my case, and I think it applies to other kinds of presentations, is focus, rapport, uh, climax, and then emotional connection. So basically, at the very beginning, they're in this world where you're hanging out at that cocktail party, you have so much else going on, that performer has to find a way to, at, at the highest level, what we're doing as entertainers is we're, we're creating this little world that you can escape into for Correct. 45 minutes or, or three minutes at the cocktail party or whatever the And case we sometimes go kicking and screaming. Yeah, yeah. You have to basically yeah. convince us to go there in sure. one way, shape, or form. You have to make it inviting. And, and you do, you do a great job of it. And, and the entertainer's first job is creating that focus and yeah. understanding because if you don't have focus, they're not gonna follow you at all. Right. And then that next phase is gelling together that group of strangers into an audience, which is something different than just a group of strangers. It gets synced up as people. Correct. That's that's the cool thing about experiencing things in groups is we laugh at the same time, we cry at the same time, we're excited at the same time, and that's this really powerful feeling that's different from just sitting in your pajamas with the Cheetos, <laughs> right. you know, on your, on your right? Yeah, yeah, very different. And then once they're kind of gelled together and you have that relationship with the performer, now you can take them somewhere. And that's right. that really impactful phase of the performance, whatever that is, that thing that, that they're gonna be talking about in the car on the way home. And then that last phase is shaping the emotional experience as they walk out of the theater. It's, it's that moment of connection. It's that quiet moment that some of the classic like vaudeville acts were great at this. So just, yeah. you know, um, just sitting alone on the, on the stool, kind of, you know, talking to the audience and they feeling like everyone in that, you know, 1500 person audience, if it's, you know, uh, Frank Sinatra was great at this. Feels like feels like you're he's talking just to you. That's just a that true moment. connector right there. That's somebody yeah. who understands the power and then has the ability to do it because it's not. It sounds easy. It's not easy. It's not easy to connect with people when you're when they you're trying to make them or you are making them feel. Like they're, you're talking to them. And yeah. what does that do? That enhances the experience. It makes them trust you and feel comfortable with you. So whatever your next step is, whatever your next trick, your next song, your next right. performance, they're already in. They have committed to you. And this is what's interesting because we're talking about those two parallel paths. And what I found out is because I have this entrepreneurial side of my career and I have the craft side of my career, I found out that there are things that I've, I've learned on the craft side of being a performer that make me a better marketer, make me a better salesperson, and make me a better, and when you're talking earlier about like what are next steps, that's something I'm interested in exploring as, um, you know, in writing and speaking is, is what are the skills that I've developed from this side of the stage, so whether you're gonna walk on a stage or not, are going to make you more effective at, at what you're doing. That's right, because um, you do, so we, you're a performer, but you're also a speaker. Um, you, you travel, you do a lot. Um, it's not just, and that's one of the one of the reasons why I love to have you on the show is because you do so much more than what I would consider like a parlor trick. This is not a one trick pony. This is his passion. That's why I love the title of the show, "Living Your Passion," because you're living it, you're breathing it, you're doing it all the time, and you're always developing it. Yeah. Um, and you're not focused just on one little part of it you're expanding all the time. And that could mean a different thing than it did the last time you were on sure, the show. Sure, sure. Um, you've changed, you've evolved. And, and that creativity, you know, it's interesting, we're talking about the, we were talking some about, um, about the event at Del Frisco's this weekend. And that creativity that applies to creating a new piece or 
finding something, you also see other ways of, of making that work in the market. So the way this came up was me realizing, you know, we have this interesting situation in Orlando where we have tons of event space and it is packed and full in the yeah. spring and the fall. And it's largely empty over the summer. And, and there's usually about a week in July when the Orange County Convention Center is just zombie apocalypse. <laughs> it's only one week, people try. It's only one week, but, but, we have millions of tourists. And so there's this opportunity of here's this empty space and here's all this high traffic um, within the state. How do, we, how, do we cre how do we create the opportunity out of that? And that was, you know, with, with Magical Nights at Del Frisco's, which will be starting uh, Saturday. That's Saturday, Joel. That's Hi, right. All right, so let's talk about, well, I want to talk about that program. Let's do so it. that's yeah, this yeah. weekend, yes. Saturday, July 13th, Magical Nights. This is something you created. We're talking yes. about the creative process. So this has evolved, you have figured it out. This is catered to that. Mm -hmm. um, and so what, are, what can people expect? How does this yeah. work? So this is a, this is a night out that's, that's kind of all in one, right? So what we have is we have a four course Del Frisco's meal. So this is the Del Frisco's that is on the New York Times wine, uh, wine so list there. that has yeah, oh. Consumer Reports, one of the best steakhouses in America. Um, a really extraordinary meal. And between the courses, we're interweaving live magic. So we'll have a entertainment experience um, between salad and the main course. And then we're gonna do a big 45 minute show at the end. But when I say big, what's, what's cool about this is a lot of times when I'm performing, you know, people will see me on stage or they'll see me uh, on TV, but I haven't, um, it's very rare and, and people love that sense of, and it's what I miss about what you were talking about with the cocktail style magic. I hate everything else about it because it feels like, <laughs> it feels like making 50 cold It's a little in kitschy. Well, it's, it's, here's it's what hard. it is. Here's what it is, is it's people are going about their own business. Yes. And you are in a situation where you're forced to say, no, look at me. Yeah when you're doing everything else. I agree. And I just I just think it's inherently awkward and it's it, and it can be done very very well. There are people who are naturally and this is this is the other thing and this is something a lot of entrepreneur folks talk about, but I learned very easily very very quickly that my comfort level was on stage. My comfort level was not interrupting a group of strangers while they're right. in the middle of a conversation and creating a show around that. My comfort level was and I'm somebody who naturally I feel more confident, more myself, more at, at ease when I'm in front of 500 There's strangers. There's also a flow, I would imagine. Like, so if you come up yes. to people in a cocktail situation, your flow is constantly interrupted. Yes. You get to do a performance where it's start to finish, mostly. So you've got this 45 minutes, we'll yes. use that as an example, where nobody, I mean, you're gonna have people in the background, don't get me wrong, but you, nobody's coming up and interrupting you, or nobody, right. the waiter's not coming over in the middle of your performance and saying, uh, would you like another happy hour before we close at yeah. seven? I mean, you're having this full-on performance ability where the and flow that, goes. that focus stage, which is so important and so difficult, you're doing wants. Yeah. You welcome them into your world. You create this this cool experience. And the thing that I do when I'm when I'm opening shows, you know, you talk about the phones. It's not a problem when people have, have bought a ticket and they're there to see it and they're excited or they they saw my spot on Penn and Teller or they saw something else and it makes them excited and they want to be there. Right. It's very very different. That's that's a lot of the work is done sure. for you. But if it's this is the blah 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 company sales okay. meeting and they could be making sales calls and they're like why are we at this stupid training and they're already annoyed to they're be annoyed. there um, so that first thing so I do something in that situation that's that's very very visual and I know that 30% of the room is staring at their phones right and what happens is and on the video screens people see this visual thing because it's being projected live to these to these screens um, and you get this <gasps> And these people who are on their phones, suddenly they, they look up stop, and they realize right? they missed out. And then there's something else that happens immediately after that that kind of grabs them and brings us, brings us in. Right. But I only have to do that once. And if it's the cocktail environment where the performer is constantly interrupting yeah. them, they've got to earn that every time. And there are people who are fantastic at it. There are people who, who have this incredible gift of putting people at ease immediately within meeting them. There's, there are a couple performers here in Orlando that immediately spring to mind about that. They have that. They're like a great bartender. 
You know, they have that ability that you're just there with them in the moment, in the conversation, and they deliver something that's really amazing really quickly so you know that you're not going to waste your time. You know, you're not just sitting there. I agree. You know, waiting through the thing. But that's, I, I feel like, even at its highest level, it's kind of demeaning to whatever the performance medium is. That, right. that, that arts that we take very seriously, you know, you don't have a, a great vocalist walking around and saying, I'm going to sing you an aria right, right. now. You know, you don't have, and so I, I think it's kind of, it's everything that you're doing and perception is, is so incredibly important. And it's incredibly important whatever the business you're in. Everything you're doing is, is creating that perception. And when from the very beginning, you're barging in on somebody else. Correct. It's a very low status position. And it says, it's, there's a subconscious message that what this person is doing isn't important enough for us to put them at the front of the room with a light on. And that subconscious signal tells everybody else, oh, this probably isn't very good. And then the performer has to earn that back. That's and the really so good ones fair. Do, I agree. But um, That's the thought process. When yeah. I see somebody come up and I'm in the middle of, I don't know, happy hour at not the greatest bar. Sure. My immediate thought is, God bless this person. It's not going to be good. It's going to be so bad. Why is, why is he or she here? Um, and Justin, you're right. Sometimes we do things and it doesn't work out. It doesn't mean it wasn't worth doing. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. So tell yeah. me what you do. Are we going to, are we get? we're getting close. So are we getting tell close? me, I mean, I, I could talk for hours with you, <laughs> uh, but I want people to know. So they're going, it's a four course yeah. meal. You can book it at Del Frisco's um, you can book on iDrive. The best way to book it is MagicalNightsOrlando.com. There you go. We've got the menu. We've got all the details. You can just click and grab your, grab your ticket right now. Um, if you have not been to this location, it's amazing. Um, and of course, if you haven't seen Nathan, what could you <laughs> not want to see about that? But what can they expect? Like, I don't want to put sure. you on the spot. Um, I didn't ask you the last time to do anything. <laughs> um, I'm super easily entertained. So I'm one of those people that you could come up to, even if I'm going to get, even if I yeah. roll my eyes at you, you could come up to me at any moment. And I'm, I'm, cause you know what? I feel bad for that person. You're not that person. I, 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 I feel guilt. I feel terrible. And I'm like, oh my God, just let him come up. <laughs> let him come do his trick. Just please let him. Like it's it's terrible. So uh, everybody else rolls their eyes and yeah. walks away. I'm the one sitting there at well, the table. Instead of talking about it, Ted, we'll we'll share something. Okay, and let's share. This is something. This is this is like. I have no idea what we're doing. Ted so has, has letting no it idea. Again. Ted is Ted is Ted is. Uh, so cool. this as usual. <laughs> so yeah. So this is this is something that's brand new. This my cats have seen this and they're, your cats. They're, they're your cats sick have of seen it, it. So it's time. They've had the, enough, Dad. Absolutely. It's time for the uh, the human. Uh, human trials um, and uh, basically yeah, so this, this started just a few hours ago right so the idea was he's got a whole deck of cards yeah, I had no just, idea that deck no of cards. idea no idea um, but here's the idea so I discovered that I have kind of like a, like a superpower right that I that I didn't know about and let me let me show you what I mean uh, Ted, I'm gonna invite you uh, just kind of uh, check those out for us it's not it's okay. not important what they are in fact maybe a few more um, you can just make sure and the idea here is you don't have to remember what they are it's not important the identity. It's checking to see that like they're not um, there's not some like weird computer chip or or something like that that's in there. So can I tell you what most people think when they look at these? They're freaked out because they don't they they are afraid they're gonna mess up the trick. I absolutely, swear to God. Absolutely. Yeah. Every time I get something like this, I'm oh my god, I'm gonna do something that's gonna <laughs> ruin the whole show. Absolutely. People but think he's, that all but the he's time. great. He's doing he's doing a fantastic okay. job. And they feel great. And uh, they feel good and they're good and, and, and they're not like a like a weird hologram. No. And here's the thing I discovered. I discovered this literally this morning as we come through there. Is so. that yeah. <laughs> and oh one one last little part, Ted. Um, I'm gonna invite this is gonna seem weird. I'm gonna invite you to just make sure there's no like like strange um, something oh, yeah. no on your hand. Oh, no strings on your hand. As we, None uh, of that yeah, stuff. Any technology or anything weird in there? No. Here's here's what I discovered this morning. I discovered I was I was practicing the stunt, which is like a balance stunt. It's more like juggling than magic. Uh, they call it a roulette. It's a wheel of cards, and it's a little act of balance there. And I was just laying on the bathtub, just working on this, and I discovered that I am the most attractive man in Florida. Not to women, mind you. Humor. Or, I like humor. It's good. Right. Or necessarily, or not even necessarily to men, right? But playing cards, playing cards, pieces of pace card, uh, sure think I am swell. 
And as we were creating this delicate balance. I know you guys can see it. Can we? Yes, can we? Are we they good and clear, yeah, perfect? They can see it. As we're creating this delicate balance here, I, you feel this tingling between the flesh and the cards themselves. And with that, Just a few. You're magical. Here's the weird part, as they, as they kind of stay there. Ted, I'm gonna invite you to just carefully slide one of those cards out, anyone you would like. Hey, Ted, so. whenever you feel like it, I want you to just say fall. Fall. Nice. As we come through, there's no weird anything. You're not mad, you're, anything you're, like not you're not magnetic. We're not magnetic, we're not magnetic as we come through there. But, um, <laughs> I love it. So a little, little fun, little fun casual demo. I love it. Um, but see, that's what you. That's why you want to go to the show. And, you want to see Nathan. And yeah, and the other thing I'd recommend people check out. Um, we have the the appearance on Penn and Teller Fool Us, which had 1.4 million views. Uh, there's a lot of stuff you can check on. That's a small on, on viral videos. video. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. What? So what is? So Justin asked it earlier. What's the next yeah. step for you? Next step for me, you know, there are two levels of it. Obviously, there's there's yesterday, today, tomorrow, right? There's the, the constant, uh, continual improvement. Um, but there's also that transition to, to trying to figure out, you know, how does, how does what I do, what are the lessons from it that can, that can serve other people? Um, and uh, uh, finding that as a speaker and as a writer and, and in other contexts. And uh, yeah, and continuing to, continuing to find opportunities to, to be in front of audiences doing what I love and what I care about. And uh, that's I love yeah, it. That's that's always the next step. There's not a big, you know. There's not a a oh this is the line and this is the line. I think a lot of people line. get caught up in that. And I want to yeah. encourage you to not make the next step such a giant leap for mankind. You right. can make the next step, and it can be baby steps. It can be little steps. It can be the right step, but just take the step. Take this, the step. Take the step. Take the step. All right. So step. we're gonna share all of Nathan's contact information. We're gonna share the link for this Saturday for um, the show at Del Frisco's. We're gonna share how you can reach out to Nathan. Um, any parting words of wisdom for them? Anything you wanna yeah. share before we head yeah, out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the phrase, we're talking some about how the, the intersection between content and, and you know, the what I do and what are some of the lessons from that. Best lesson about performing that I, that I ever received was from a, a comedian in LA called Greg Dean, who said, do the show that's in front of you, not the one that's in your head. And the example that he gave about that was a comic and a comedy club, 200 seat showroom, and there's one couple that's dead center, right, that comes in. And the opening guy comes out and he comes full of energy, he's this big storm as if it's full of 200 people, and it's awkward and there's no laughter, there's no whatever. The middle guy tries to do the same, falls flat on his face. The closer says, hey, can I join you guys? And he pulls up a chair, and he does essentially his routine, but instead of doing it standing behind the microphone on stage, he did it like the raconteur at dinner. Right. Um, just talking, and they laughed so hard, they exchanged phone numbers at the end. Um, his name is Jeff Foxworthy. Nice. Uh, so the legend goes. And, uh, uh, and that, that idea that it's not about what's in your head or your picture of what's going on in your head for, for whatever it is in your life, right? It's about what's the situation that's in front of me? How do I adapt that? How do I um, make it as effective as I can with you know, playing, playing the cards you got? I love it, playing the cards you've got. Yeah, I think people reading the audience, you've gotta read, you have to know, and just go for it. That's what Nathan did. All right, so again, we're gonna share all of his contact information. You're always a joy to have on the show. I appreciate Saturday you. Night, guys, Saturday night, guys. MagicalNightsOrlando.com. MagicalNightsOrlando.com, and he will share the show, post that, yes. and then we will reshare so that you guys can book your place. Don't you wanna go see? I mean, the food there is amazing, and food you get to see amazing. Nathan. I love it there. All right, you're a joy, my friend. Thank you so much for Thank coming you. out. Thanks for coming to see me. Since we had a little bit of a microphone, anybody who has my microphone out there, <laughs> I would like to know. Thank you. Um, thanks again for coming this way. We love you guys. We'll be back tomorrow. Show Nathan some love. Go out and support him. You've got this show, and then there's one in August as well. August 10th. Yeah, yeah so let's get to one of those shows or both. All right, thanks, man. Thank you. We'll see you later. See you tomorrow.